Hello and happy Saturday. I hope this finds you doing well. Here I am at home in my bedroom with my crazy Saturday hair. This is the real me when I'm not at church or at work. And sometimes it's just good to be authentic and to be real. And definitely in the scripture I wanted to share with you this week, it talks about who we imitate, who we want to be like and that is part of our sermon series this coming Sunday which I wanted to share with you. The first one comes from Psalm 27 and I'm reading out of our worship planner which is from the I believe the NRSV Bible version and I want to share with you Psalm 27. It says the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the ark of his tent, the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me. O God of my salvation, if my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And of course in there, I heard some things that spoke to me this week with our um, changes in weather and with the flooding, obviously, that we've been having in our own communities, that we will, we will take cover in the Lord's tent and that he will, he will provide. Now in Philippians 3, 17 and through um, chapter 4, Verse 1, this is the part I want to share. This is the part about who do we imitate? Who do we look after? We look after God, but who, but who else? Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in the shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of the humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory. By the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in this way my beloved now you heard in that scripture it very clearly says that we are to imitate God imitate Jesus but also live according to the example that we see in others and I'm sure if you're like me you've had people in your Christian walk you've had people in your faith who you you kind of looked up to, not in the kind of way where you like put them on a pedestal, but in the kind of way where you look at them and you say, I want to be a little bit more like so-and-so because of the way that they, they, they love God, the way they serve God or how they serve God or what we learn from them. 
I'm sure if you're like me during the season of Lent, I hope that you've taken time maybe to, to give up something. And during those times when it's been hard to give up whatever it was, that you've prayed and you've asked God to be with you and to grow stronger in your faith and walk with Him. I hope also you've added some things. And if you haven't already, perhaps this is something you could add in a way of, Lord, help me be more like you. Help me to imitate you to be more like you are. I am sure that there are many people of faith that you want to imitate, to be like. I can think of people when I was a child. I'll share a few. Miss Jo, Miss Jo Newman was one of my most favorite Sunday school teachers as a child, and I wanted to be like her. I wanted to have the kind of deep faith that she had and for example the deep faith that I saw she knew scripture she like she knew it in her head she knew verse after verse after verse and so as a child she encouraged us to learn scripture to put it in our head so it'd be in our heart so that it'd be there all the times that we really needed it when we didn't just you know you don't just always carry around a bible in your pocket but it's in your head it's in your heart so She's someone I've always been inspired by, someone I'd like to imitate. But I know that I want to imitate her, not because she, because I want to imitate her, but because the way that she imitates Christ, the way that she shows Christ is a characteristic that I want in my life. <coughs> I can think of Miss Betsy. I knew Miss Betsy later in my life as an adult, and Miss Betsy showed me how to persevere. That no matter what's going on in your life, um, Miss Betsy lost a child at, at 16, 17 years old. She was someone I knew but not well, but she died in a car accident. And Miss Betsy showed me that no matter what happens in your life, no matter how bad it is or difficult or hard, that our faith is what walks us through those times. Now, by the time I knew Miss Betsy, like as a friend, as an adult, she was walking a cancer journey. And so I looked at this incredible woman of faith because, not because I want to imitate Betsy, but because Betsy so well imitated Jesus, I wanted some of that. I wanted to know how to, to persevere in my faith, no matter what was going on in my own life or around me. I'm sure that there are lots of people that you've known. Um, I think of another dear woman in North Carolina, and she was, oh, probably in her 80s when she was in my Sunday school class. And she joined our young adult Sunday school class because she wanted to be around young people. She said it made her feel young again. But I tell you what, what we learned from her was amazing faith, amazing fortitude to be in the scripture every single day. In that same class, I had an amazing Sunday school teacher who just taught me what faith looks like. And I didn't want to be like these women just because I want to be like them. I want to be like them because they were being like Jesus. They were imitating Jesus in all they did. So if you haven't added something yet for Lent, perhaps look around. Look around at people you've known through the years, people you know maybe in your own current walk of life in your family or your workplace, people that you see imitating Christ in such a way that you want some of that. I think, I think that's what we should all want during Lent as we draw our hearts closer to God. Now, some of you have been at worship each week, and I'll, I'll share this. Here's the picture that's going to be, the painting that's going to be there tomorrow. And each week I've added something different because... I know that we all approach worship in a in different way. Some of us, the words really speak to us. Sometimes it's the music. Sometimes it's just the, the feel of the room. So something Pastor Robert and I are trying to do this year is just to think about how art, how fabric and, and paint can affect the way that we worship. And to this week, I've added, you'll see last week was like the big, the big red heart. And that's Jesus. We want to be like Jesus. Come to him with our whole heart. And then this week I've added seven little pink hearts. Now, people who are just there at worship, I'm not telling them, them all this, but I'm telling you. So the seven little pink hearts represent that each day of the week, all seven days, I want to be more like Jesus each day. But I'm not there yet, so I'm not a red heart. 
but you'll see if you look closely, I added some pink to the red heart because Jesus shows us we can be like a part of Jesus. So that pink part of Jesus, I want to be like that every day of the week, all seven days. So there are seven little hearts in our road to Jesus at the bottom is changing as we're coming closer. So this week is about learning to imitate Jesus, to be more like him. And perhaps that's through watching other people on faith. Perhaps that's through just digging deep into the word, into your Bible, and finding people in the Bible that you want to be more like. Maybe you want to be more like Peter or John or Luke or um, Moses or Ruth or Esther. I mean, there are some really wonderful people that I want to be like, but not because I want to be like them, but because they, they're doing this profound work of imitating God, being like God. And so I want to be like them because I want to be more like God. So I want to close today with a prayer. And this is what most of you will recognize as the serenity prayer. And I just want to pray it over you today. So join me in prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. I hope that this finds you doing well. I hope this finds you walking the Lenten journey. If you'd like to join us midweek, we're having what I would call intimate small worship, like three people. Intimate small this week and maybe more next week and that's okay, whatever and whoever God brings. But this week we'll be meeting on Tuesday, I believe at 6 in the parlor. It is a small group. Um, we're having just some songs, good old hymns, straight out of the hymnal, singing with some accompaniment, some meditations from a book that I've been reading, which are called Walk in Her Steps and Her Footsteps, and it's about the women of the week of Lent, um, sorry, Passion Week, the week of Passion Week, and then uh, something artful. So last week we did some creative writing of prayers, and this week we'll do something different. So if that appeals to you and will help you in your Lenten journey, join us. And, and don't, if it won't, find what will work for you to grow closer to God this year. So this one's been long, and if you hung with me all this time like my dogs have, they're like right back here behind me snuggling. Thank you. I just want you to know that your church family loves you and that we pray for you and we look forward to walking this Lenten journey with you. I hope to see some of you in worship tomorrow. Bye-bye.